everyone and welcome back to another brand new aviation jet video. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, today we are doing another tutorial video in the Airbus A320neo for MSFS. Now I've seen people ask me, how do you work the autopilot in the A320neo? How do you set the aircraft up? And these are all perfectly fine questions. They're all from newer simmers, which is perfectly fine. I was once there and didn't have to set up an aircraft whatsoever. So today's video is basically just going to be showing you how to set up the aircraft, how to plan the MCDU, how to get the aircraft going flying. So we'll get on the video and you'll see how it goes. Pause it if you need any help from talking too fast, which I've been told before. You can slow down the video in settings or anything like that. I'm trying to slow my speech just to let you know. But um, yeah, so we are flying the Air New Zealand A320neo today from Queenstown to Wellington. Uh, this is about a 45 minute flight, 345 nautical miles. To do this video, you don't have to set up the exact same flight as me, you can do a flight yourself, but if this helps, then obviously do the flight with me and uh, get a better feel for how you do things. Um, just want to quickly point out, this is a default A320neo, so if any kind of third party add-ons coming in the future, like the FSABS A320, it's, it'll be a lot more in-depth and a lot more, um, more practical, more study level. So in time, if there's something else that comes out, a third party add-on, I will definitely do a tutorial on that to help you. But this is the basics, just getting start, starting Airbus aircraft, it has everything you need. Also, one more last thing to point out, this plane is still not where it should be, there's still a few bugs here and there, um, just to point that out. So if anything happens to you that doesn't happen to me, it's probably not your fault, it's probably to do with a bug of the plane. But just sort of get that out of the way, it's already been two minutes, we're going to get flying. Um, by now, you should know how to, you know, from and to, how to get a flight going from New Zealand to Queenstown, your runways. Uh, make sure you select, when you go to uh, from airport, type in NZQN and then when it comes up with it, make sure you press zoom into detail and then select your departure gate. If you don't do this, you're going to start on the runway and what's going to happen is you're going to start with your engines running. This uh, The whole purpose of this is like a cold and dark video, which is what we're doing. Yeah, once you've got all this loaded, not using Simbroof as a whole separate video, this is just the basics. In flight conditions, I'm using live conditions, um, but not live time. So we're going to switch the time over to a bit, a bit more in the daytime. But without further ado, let's get in to the A320. Right, everyone, so here we are in the flight deck of the A320neo in a cold and dark state. Now, you're probably thinking, oh my god, this is so scary, how do I get this thing started? Um, it's really not that difficult once you know it, it becomes second nature, like driving a car, honestly, it gets so simple. We're just going just gonna to show you how to do it. So as you can see, everything is completely cold and dark, nothing is on, everything's off. You're going to come to the overhead panel up here. Now the way Airbus do things, well I know that most airlines do this method, you go from down to top, left to right. Okay, not top to bottom, right to left, it's down to top, left to right. But that's when everything started. So what you want to do first, come to the middle part um, of the overhead panel, which comes under electric, and you want to turn on battery one and battery two. You do this by just clicking them in. Battery one's on, battery two's on. And then you're going to find this external power here. Now you can choose to either start the external power or, sorry, to start the APU or switch on the external power. To get things going quite fast and, uh, you know, get going straight away, you want to turn the external power. If the external power is not available to you, then you switch on the APU, but that will come later in time. Right, so we've got the plane moving, we've got the plane on. You can see everything started, everything is currently in a somewhat cold dark, but kind of like a turnaround kind of state. So now we're going to go from left to right, up to down. So most things here are in op. Okay, I can't use any, there's nothing here so that in my vision looks like it's in the wrong position. Everything here is perfectly fine. The ADA, uh, the ADLs or the ADIRSs are in the nav position, which is where they should be. What you want to do, if you're not in the nav position, um, IR1, IR2, IR3, you don't have this option because they are in-op. You can't use this. It's like I said, it is a um, default plane. So we're going to move to the middle and we're going to deal with the lights. So when you're on the ground, you want to turn on your nav lights. That's all you want to do. Nothing else. That's it. Then you want to come over here, look at your seatbelt signs, your smoking signs, they are in the on position, like I said, they're also in off, you can't touch them. Depending on the time of day, you need your lights on or not, we're going to leave them on just for now. 
and then we make our way up here, everything's good. What you want to do in the air bus is distinguish the white lights, mainly the white lights. Anything you have that is white, you want to kind of get rid of it. So these are the fuel pumps, this comes from the fuel section of the aircraft. So you want to turn them on, every single one. Now your fuel pumps are on. Perfect. That's actually all you got to do for your overhead panel. Da, 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 da. And then we're coming to go. Then that doesn't make sense. We're going to come down here. So down here, parking brake is set, which it should be before we even turn on the aircraft. We we'll want to look at our squawk. Squawk should be 2000. There we go. That's your squawk code. Weather radar off for now. Um, here over here, VFH one is perfectly good. And then if you're on that scene, you want to set your un you want to set your um, radios to either Unicom or the station which you are connecting to. Now, I don't know how you move up and down in this thing. Um, I mean, forward and back. So we just have to work like this. This is all you have to do for now. And then we've got to do the come down here to the MCDUs. And what this is, this is where you're going to get all your flight management from. This is where you're planning the flight, getting the flight plan ready, and how your autopilot's going to read everything. So what we want to do first is go to the init page. Bam, here we go. We're going to make sure this is all correct. The aircraft does already load the flight plan for you. Okay, so you don't do anything in that kind of sense. You just have to look at it, make sure everything's good. So, co route none. Check your from and to ICALs, N, um, NZQN, NZWN. These are our ICALs for the departure from Queenstown to Wellington. Flight number 1933, perfectly fine for me. That rhymes. Cost index. Now, I'm not sure if this works, but let's just put in a random cost index. Perfect, 25. You can look these up, by the way. If you type in the airline and aircraft you type in what's the cost index for New Zealand Air New Zealand in the A320 you'll bring it up and you can put that in um over here this is your weights and fuels it's kind of already done for you, you don't have to do anything over here but then you want to look at your flight plan page NZQN we're going to go departure and you want to set select the runway that you'll depart with with a headwind so whatever the wind is you're going to read that and then get a headwind off of it so the easiest way to do this is to just go to a weather service where you can get the wind. So I'm on my phone right now because we don't have active sky on here. Oh god, keep talking a lot. Um, go to Meta or whatever you're doing. Type in the ICAL NZQN. Is that right? Yeah. Press go. Where well, the winds are currently 260 at five knots. So we're going to look at the runway which best fits to, um, <clears throat> 260 at five knots. So if we have here, we have options 05. One four two three and three two. Look at the meters of the runway. Yeah, this is too short. We can't take off on these runways. We're looking at these two large runways here. We want to take off on two three. It's the closest to two six zero, which would be a headwind. There we go. And then we'll look at the departures. If you're on a flight plan, for example, from Simbrief, you're going to get a departure in your route. It will say something. One of these. It'll be the f first route there. You want to choose the correct one. Now I'm going to click none today because we haven't got a flight plan. This is just the basics of getting this plane in the air with the default flight plan. So we're going to click no SID. Okay, and you can see we've got nothing there. Press insert, and there we go. We've got a runway, two, three, and a normal flight plan. Then what we're going to do is click, oh god, what's gone? NZWN. Then we're going to click arrival. Now I'm going to do this now just so you can do it all uh, prior to being in the air so it's all a bit more rushed but what you want to do is here you want to click the arrival runway for your arrival airport so we're going to do that same thing for departure we're going to go to meta i'm going to put in the ical code n z w n and the wind is currently 350 at nine knots so already i can see we've got an ils 34 and i'm perfectly happy to take the 34 closest to the, uh, the wind we have um, no transitions and we're going to take the um, no start either so it's straight in arrival press insert and that is your flight plan done for you now bear in mind winds can change throughout the flight which means you may have to change your destination runway usually I plan the arrival before top of descent and that way you know that will be the runway for arrival but because this is like I said a tutorial which is kind of getting this is your flight plan completely perfect you've done everything you are now ready for push and start 
if you want me to go in more detail on this kind of flight do let me know in the comments below and we'll do the weights we'll do the correct amount of fuel we'll do everything like that but this is like i said just to get you in the air ready and set to go as a learner so let's go back to the camera and reset position so now what we want to do is get in a push and start state so we can get the aircraft ready come up to the overhead panel again what we want to do here it says apu and um well, it's APU and CPU and APU bleed. It's what we want to start. We want to start the auxiliary power unit. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on the master switch. And usually you wait for an open valve, but obviously it doesn't simulate this. So you're going to click start. And then once the APU starts, what you want to do then, you want to turn on the APU bleed. But the APU has not started yet. I wonder if we can do it down here. No, we can't. Okay. So just give it a little bit. I'd say give it two minutes for APU to start successfully and then click the APU bleed, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, it's been about two minutes, APU has started, and if you want to double check, what you can do is go outside and you can hear it. Yeah, can you hear that? This is the APU, right here, and you can hear noise coming out of it, then you know it's started for sure. Um, so once that's started, and it all says here, available, you can press the APU bleed, and now we have power through the APU to the aircraft. At this point, you can switch off the external power, and because we're pushing start, we can turn on the beacon light. The beacon light is the flashing red light on top of the plane. See it? Right here. This says aircraft know that you're in a moving state and ready for push. And you're active. Now everything down here is perfectly fine. We're on to the push and start sequence now. Before we do that, we're going to make sure everything is set. So this should be in HPA. Um, I can't pronounce the name of it. Heco, Heco, Pax, something like that. Hesco, Pastels. I, don't know. I can't pronounce it. I know what it is, but I can't pronounce it. You want to set the correct Q and H, which is um, you can find as well on the ATIS. So Q and H one zero five, which you already set. Bring it down. There we go. This is how high we are above sea level. Perfect. And they want to set our autopilot. So someone asked me to do an autopilot tutorial. Let me tell you something about the autopilot and the Airbus and the Boeing. The Airbus autopilot, think of it as an automatic car. Things, you don't have to do any kind of manual control, like you're within a manual. It's, it's a lot more simple, yeah? Um, so in the, in the Airbus, doing autopilot, just set your altitude. We're going to cruise at 340 today. Just set, oh no, actually, sorry, that's wrong. We're going to cruise at 240 today. That's our cruising altitude. Just set your altitude and that is all you've got to do. There's nothing like the Boeing, which I which I class like a manual car, where you have to um, select LNAV, VNAV, set your speed, set your heading on this kind of stuff. It's all automatic in the Airbus. It's a lot more technical. A lot more technical. So you basically do a lot less. <laughs> so that's all you've got to do. Set your altitude and then we'll get deeper into the autopilot system on takeoff. So you're perfect, we're now ready for push and start and engine start. So what you want to do is press shift P, left shift and P, release your parking brake. As you can see, the pushback tug is connecting to the aircraft. While that's happening, let me tell you the engine start sequence. Really, really simple, not a lot to do. Make sure your master switch and your APU is started as well as the APU bleed. Make sure your fuel pumps are on, which we've done earlier on, which is turn these white lights, extinguish them. And that's it. And then switch this engine mode selector down here to ignition start. So you can do that with the mouse wheel or clicking it in. <clears throat> Once it's on ignition start, on when we start pushing back, which we are now, all you want to do is start engine two, then engine one. Every airline does it in different sequences. I can know easy yet do engine one, then engine two, but we're gonna do engine two and engine one. So flick it up, that's it. Just wait for it to start. We're gonna watch it. So already we can see the N2 rising, which is perfect, what we want to see. Then we're going to see the N1 rising as well. And we can also hear the bass. If we look outside quickly. Oh, we've gone back a bit too far. There we go. If we look outside, you see engine 1 here. On the right, engine 2, sorry. Engine 2 here on the right is already spinning. And look at engine 1, which is just sitting there.
Perfect, so I'm happy with engine 2 start. So now what we want to do is do the exact same for engine 1. Click on engine 1. That noise you just heard, which people call the dog bark, that is simply just the PTU of the Airbus systems. The Airbus um, has something called the PTU, and what, when it's starting, it makes that barking noise. Okay, so I'm happy with engine startup now.